What's up everybody? I'm Tim from Tim Bridge Gifts. I've got an awesome video for you guys today. Today we're going to be making pumpkin chai latte candles from Candle Science. Check that thing out. Now this is actually an inspiration project from Candle Science. To check it out we're going to go to the Candle Science website. We're going to go to the uh, inspiration tab. And it's going to be right there on top. If you guys scroll through it you'll see it's got a complete list of instructions. A complete list of ingredients that we're going to need and everything's right there for us to be able to make these candles. Now the cool thing about the way Candle Science does their inspiration projects is it's not really sold as a kit but they do have an add to cart feature on that project so all the supplies and equipment that you're going to need to make this project are already listed right there for you. You can go ahead and hit add to cart it'll add everything you need to the cart to complete this project so there's no confusion there's no accidentally buying the wrong thing there's no searching over their website everything you need is right here you can just hit add to cart Go ahead and complete your transaction. It'll come and you'll be making candles before you know it. Now what makes it even better is it's not sold as a kit, so you don't have to buy everything. They do have an add or remove feature on every item. So if it's something that you don't need, something that you already have, you can go ahead and remove it from your cart. So you don't pay for it twice. So you can just hit add to cart. It's going to add everything to your cart. Then you can go through that list, remove the things that you don't need, maybe some stuff that you already have. Just pay for the things that you need to complete this project. It'll come to you in the mail. You'll be ready to go. So let's go ahead and complete that part of the transaction, get those supplies on their way to me so I can get ready to make these candles. Now while we're waiting on those supplies to get here, there are a couple things that we can do to go ahead and prepare ahead of time. You will need to make your own molds for the cinnamon stick embeds. Now to do that, you can use any type of silicone mold making kit that you have, or you can follow the link right there. I've got an amazing silicone mold making video on my channel. So you guys make sure you check that out. Also for the whipped wax topping that's really going to make this candle stand out, we are going to need uh, piping bags and some piping tips and couplers, a metal whisk, and a little miniature cheese grater. So I've got everything I need. I went ahead and made my molds for my embeds. Now we've just got to wait for my supplies to get here. Let's go check it out and see who it is. All right, so as you can see, my supplies came. Let's do a real quick unboxing and check out everything we got. First thing is going to be a 10 pound bag of Eco Soya PB Pillar Soy Wax. A 10 pound bag of Golden Brands 464 Soy Wax. A small pouring pitcher. A one ounce bottle of Golden Honey Liquid Candle Dye. A one ounce bottle of Brown Liquid Candle Dye. A one solid block of Pumpkin Colored Candle Dye. A package of 12 Eco 14 Candle Wicks. along with a package of 120 wick stickers, a case of 12 of these gorgeous amber status jars, a roll of warning labels, a package of 12 wick bars, and of course our four ounce bottle of pumpkin chai fragrance oil. Let's check this out real quick. And it smells absolutely amazing. It's got a really smooth pumpkin spice smell. It smells just like walking into a coffee shop and ordering a pumpkin latte. All right, so we've got all of our supplies unpacked. Let's go ahead and put all this together and start making our candles. So the first step is going to be to make our cinnamon stick embeds. I've already gone ahead and made the uh, molds that I'm going to use. I'll let you guys check those out. Now to make these I'm just going to take four ounces of the Eco Soy Pillar Blend. To get the color right we're going to take four drops of the brown liquid dye. And now we're going to heat this to 185. Alright so this is melted down it's ready to pour. Now if we would wanted to scent these we could have added a quarter ounce of the fragrance oil to our mixture. But I'm going to save all that for later. So now we've got it melted down. We've got our color added. We're going to go ahead and pour our embeds. Okay. Now we're just going to set these aside, let these cool, and move on to the next thing. So while we wait on our embeds to cool, we can go ahead and start working on the base part of our candle. Now to do that, we're going to take 20 ounces of the Golden Brands 464. We're going to go ahead and melt it down. While we're waiting on that to melt, we can go ahead and get our candle jars ready. To do that, we're going to go ahead and take two of the... Uh, amber status jars and we're going to go ahead and add the wicks. To do that we're just going to take a wick for each one. The easiest way to do this is just take an old straw. This is just a uh, plastic straw from a drinking tumbler. We're going to go ahead and put the wick in it. We're going to go ahead and take one of the uh, wick stickers, attach it to the bottom of the metal wick tab. It's going to line it up with the very center of our jar. Apply just a little bit of pressure and it's on there. Go ahead and do the same with the other one. Now to finish these up, we're just going to hold them in place with our wick bars. Alright, these are all set, ready to be turned into candles. We'll set these aside for now and wait for our wax to finish melting. 
Okay, so we've melted down to 185. We're going to go ahead and pour off four ounces of this that we're going to put aside to use for our whip topping later. And we're going to be remelting this later, so if you have an additional pouring pitcher, it's best added to that. If not, you can add it to a paper or plastic cup and deal with it later. But we've got an extra pouring pitcher, so we're going to go ahead and tear off our scale. We're going to pour off four ounces. We're going to put that aside. We're going to use that later. Now we're going to go ahead and color our wax. Now to color our wax, we can either use the pumpkin dye block or the uh, golden honey liquid dye. I think I'll go with the liquid dye. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add uh, two drops. Should give us a nice light golden brown honey color. We're going to go ahead and stir that up a bit. And now it's time to add our fragrance oil. We're going to be adding one and a half ounces to this one pound of melted wax and liquid candle dye. We're going to go ahead and add it in now. Now we're just going to stir this a bit, make sure it's all mixed up really well. Let this sit and cool for just a bit and we'll be ready to pour. Alright, once we've cooled about 135, we can go ahead and pour our candles. We're going to want to pour these about 80% full. We want to leave enough room at the top for our cinnamon stick in bed and our whip topping. Okay, these are almost done. We're going to let these sit and cool. And once they're nice and cool, we can go ahead and start decorating. So our candles have completely dried. Now it's time to go ahead and finish decorating. We're going to go ahead and pull our wick bars off. Check out that nice gorgeous color in those smooth tops. Alright, so first we're going to unmold our cinnamon sticks. Very carefully without breaking these. Try to get them from the mold. And a couple of them are going to break. Like this one. That's why we make several just to make sure. But we're going to save this because it's going to serve its purpose in just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to set the broken pieces aside. Now it's time to set these. To do that, we're going to take our heat gun. We're basically just going to melt just a tiny bit of the top layer of the wax. Just enough to get it soft so we can position this. Then when it dries, it's going to stick. So we're going to go ahead and warm this up. Position that in there just how we want it. Just like that. And now once that dries, it's going to be a little bit more secure. We won't have to worry about it moving around. Let's go do it with the other one. Alright, those are both secure. We're going to set those aside. Now we've got to get our uh, whip topping wax ready. So we're going to go ahead and take the uh, four ounces of wax that we set aside earlier. Go ahead and melt it down. There's really no temperature setting that we're going to melt this to. We're basically just going to melt it until we can see it starting to liquefy. We don't want to get it too hot because we're going to have to stir it while it cools to be able to give it that whip texture. So the hotter we get it, the longer we're going to have to wait for it to cool. We're just going to have to whip it more, create more work for ourselves. So we're just going to let this barely melt until it starts to liquefy. Then we're going to pull it off and start our whipping process. So while that's melting, we can get a few other things ready. We're going to take the wisp that we're going to melt it with. Now we're going to take one of our piping bags. And we're just going to cut a medium sized opening at the bottom. Probably about three quarter inches up the bag. Just enough to get our tip through and be able to add our coupler to it. Alright, so we've got our piping bag put together, ready to go. We've got our wax starting to melt. So now that our wax is liquefied, we're going to add just a little bit of fragrance oil to it. So for this four ounces, we're going to add about a quarter ounce of fragrance oil. So now we're going to go ahead and whip it as it cools till we get that nice whip frosting consistency. It's going to take a while, so let's speed this up. Alright, so all in all, we've been going about 10 minutes. We're just about there. So what we're going to be looking for, we want to kind of eyeball it to make sure it's going to be thick enough to where it's going to fit into the piping bag without dripping out. What we're going to look for is for it to form peaks when we pull our uh, stirring implement out of it. I don't know how well that's actually going to show on camera. For those of you that are familiar with soap making, it's going to be a little bit thicker than trace. We're just looking for those mounds to form when we pull our whisk out of it. We're just about ready. There we go. Just thick enough to where it's not going to drip off the end of our uh, spatula. Now we're going to go ahead and load our piping bag. Okay, now we're going to go take each candle. 
Helps you have a little lazy suit. Helps me to have a little lazy Susan to set it on and be able to turn it. Have that much more control over it. Now we're just going to pipe the frosting on there just like we would for uh, any other type of baking type product where we would be using a piping bag. We're going to put a little, we're not going to cover the top, we're just going to put a little bit of a dollop on the top so we can still see the uh, that gorgeous honey color on the bottom. You really don't even need a uh, piping bag and piping tips for this. You can just use a spoon and spoon it on there. I just like the look that the uh, piping bag and the piping tips give it. In case anybody's wondering, I'm using a uh, Wilton number 32 piping tip. Alright, those are all set. We've got a little bit left in there, so if we messed up or we have more to go, we can just let this dry a little bit, scrape it all out of there, remelt it, start the whole process over again. So we're almost done decorating these. One last step, we're going to take a couple of the uh, broken cinnamon stick embeds that didn't quite make it and take the little miniature cheese grater and we're just going to add a little bit of a uh, cinnamon sprinkles to the top of it. And so we're going to give that a few minutes to dry then we're going to go ahead and finish up our wicks. So our last decorating step is to go ahead and trim the wicks. A couple different ways we can do it. We can just take our scissors and trim these to a quarter inch or we can actually take a metal rod or a straw or something and we can go ahead and curl the wick. What we're going to do is just uh, basically take the wick and wrap it around the metal rod that way when we pinch it up it has that nice spiral effect there we go it's a little bit fancier and more decorative if you are going to curl the wick you do need to make sure that you trim it before you light the candle if you're going to sell it or give it away, make sure the person that's receiving it knows that they're going to have to trim that wick. Because you definitely don't want to burn it with the uh, inch or so excess wick that's still left on it. And on that same note, even if we're making these for ourselves, we're going to go ahead and want to put a warning label on the bottom. Just because this may sit around for a while, one of your friends or neighbors might decide they like it. You'll go ahead and give it to them, and they may not know proper care and burning instructions. So anytime we sell or give a candle, Always, always, always a good idea to have a warning label on the bottom. So they're not expensive at all, so go ahead and make sure you pick those up. Just add those to any candle you make, just in case. That way you're covered from any potential liability issues that may arise. So there are our completed candles. If we want to take this one step further, we can go to Avery.com, put some gorgeous labels on these. But I think I'm going to leave them just how they are. Let's zoom in and check them out. There you have it folks, hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was an amazingly fun candle project with gorgeous results. The best part is Candle Science made everything super simple for us. They compiled the uh, list of supplies and equipment. All we've got to do is just uh, point and click. Everything arrives at our doorstep. All the hard stuff is done. Now we can just enjoy ourselves and make candles. I will leave the Candle Science link in the website if you guys want to check that out. If you're not a subscriber to my video, make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when I put new videos out. Make sure you leave a like or a comment. Head over to my playlist, check out all my other videos, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everybody.